About a year and a half ago, when I reviewed these machines, I went over, in short, one of the reasons I didn't like the keyboard on them, which is that they don't feel good to type on, and they're obnoxiously loud in contrast to Apple's older machines and almost any other laptop. Looking back a year and a half later, that's actually the least of the problems with these keyboards and with these machines. The big problem with these keys is that they stop working for no good reason. A lot of people have been coming into our store and saying the keys don't work and they didn't do anything to the machine and it just magically stopped happening. It just stopped working, stopped typing, or it st magically started typing duplicates every time they would type a key. And in our experience over the past 10 years being in business, 99% of the time when somebody says that their keys magically stopped working, we'll open the machine and inside the machine we'll find water or Coca-Cola or cat urine or cockroaches and all sorts of nasty stuff that make it very clear that it was user-inflicted damage, not a defect in manufacturing that caused the keys to stop working. So when we started opening these, imagine our surprise when almost every single one that we opened that would have a keyboard issue would have no signs of liquid damage, no signs of physical damage, and no signs of user-inflicted harm. The machines were often in mint perfect condition, not a scratch on them, beautiful looking insides, no liquid sensors tripped, and keys just stopped working. Or they would type the R key and then the R would show up multiple times. So I started looking into this online to get and try and get an idea if this was happening with other people. And apparently it seems to be a quite a common issue. I checked out Mac rumors and some other forums and I found some really sad comments. First, a painful chastisement. I agree with Apple not repairing it under warranty that was expired. You had all that time to buy Apple Care, but did not. There's not much of a defense you have to make it seem unfair. Another post here. I meant to buy Apple Care a month ago and I forgot. As the old saying goes, you snooze, you lose. You snooze, you lose. Why were you snoozing? And there are some points here that I quite agree with. Some comments here say, what about when Apple Care expires? Shouldn't have to be worried too far after that, especially if you have a top of the line machine. Too much investment. Unobtainium makes a good comment here. Do this enough times to your customers and you lose as a company. Nobody wants to spend thousands of dollars on a premium laptop and then have a stupid key fail because of shoddy design. And I agree with all the people making these very good points. When a machine costs $2,000 and it has similar specs to something that way cost way less money, you would expect that it would at the very least have a keyboard design that was equally durable, if not more durable, but not less durable. So if you sell a machine that costs $1,200, and it has similar specifications to something that may cost seven or $800. I would expect that the machine that costs $500 extra dollars would be at the very least as durable to the point where I would not have to spend an additional $300 on a warranty for it. If I've spent $2,000 on a device that has very similar specifications to a $1,200 device, it is adding insult to injury to say, in addition to that $2,000, no, that extra $800 was not good enough, you now have to spend an additional $300 in order to ensure that your keys will continue to work when your one-year warranty is up. I think that's getting a little too unreasonable, and I think people are becoming apologists for products just because they're fans of the company that created them. I love companies like Lenovo, I love Motorola, but if they do something that I don't like, I will very clearly point that out. I love DPA, they make amazing microphones. I love my DPA 4065, but I think the DPA Define 80, some of the Define series are pretty awful, and you know, it is what it is, you just you have to be honest. Now, someone in this thread made a point where they said, if you buy a Toshiba at Best Buy for $1,200 and the keyboard goes in 14 months, that's it. You're screwed. Not the case with Apple. And I feel that this is not exactly a fair comparison when we're going with brands that are not Apple when it comes to keyboard replacement. The reason I don't think this is a fair comparison is that even if you do not get help from the manufacturer, that replacing the keyboard on many other brand laptops is actually quite simple. So let's go over some other person's video here on replacing a keyboard on a Dell Inspiron 15R. I'm just going to be using a little piece of this video from parts-people.com. You should check them out since I'm essentially using their video here. So you can see that replacing the keyboard on this machine takes virtually no effort. So you're going to unlock the battery, uh, you're going to remove the battery, like after you remove the battery you're going to take out one or two screws here. When you take out the screws you're just going to pry the keyboard off, you pry the keyboard off and you're going to unplug it and then you essentially just put the new keyboard in, plug it in and at the end of the video you just put the screws back in. This keyboard replacement here on this particular laptop is something that a 10 year old who has never used a screwdriver in his life can complete in something like a minute or two. Whereas with an Apple machine, as I'm going to show you here, 
Firstly, with a lot of these Apple machines that have been made since around 2010, if it's an Air, or 2012, if it's a Pro, what you have to do to get the keyboard out is an absolute and utter nightmare. What you have to do is you have to remove everything from the machine. Often this includes removing a battery that is sealed into the machine. Once you've removed the motherboard, the battery, and everything from the machine, you then have to rip the keyboard out, usually with some sort of tool, because it is riveted into the machine. Once you have ripped it out, a lot of those rivets will still be stuck in the machine. So you have to sit there removing somewhere between 50 to 100 rivets manually with this tool. And if they don't come out, it, the keyboard will never sit the same again. Once you have removed every single one of those rivets, you then have to use a screwdriver with these special screws that are going to thread those holes because those holes had rivets in them, not screws, so they're not going to be threaded. So you have to individually screw in about a 50 to 100 screws to thread every single one of those screw holes and then put every single component back into the machine. Now at the time of this video, if you were to purchase a Dell Inspiron 15R keyboard, those can be found anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks on eBay, maybe 30 bucks if you go to some heavily branded website. Now, what you will find if we go on eBay and look for a keyboard for one of these MacBooks, not only is the price considerably more money, but you also have a ridiculous amount more labor to do. The cheapest one that I can find here is $89 from China with no backlight. Uh, $95 from China, so you're going to be waiting a while for it to get shipped. And if you want to buy it in the United States, you're going to be looking at shipping costing somewhere uh, to a total somewhere around $120 to $130. So I don't think it's fair to compare Apple to the other brands when you say, well, at least Apple offers you an option for $275 to $475 to replace their defective keyboard from their own bad design. Because if Toshiba doesn't want to help you, if Dell or Acer or Asus don't want to help you, you can hop on eBay buy the keyboard for 10 to 20 bucks, and pop it in yourself in one or two minutes, and it's not that big a deal. But with an Apple machine, the way that they are manufactured, if you wish to replace the keyboard and you don't have manufacturer support, not only are you looking at an investment of one to $200 for the keyboard, but you're also looking at an investment of several hours of your time, ripping every single piece out of your machine, ripping the keyboard out of the machine, cutting up every single one of those rivets that didn't want to come out by hand, which is not at all pleasant, and then reassembling all back together and, and praying that it works. Well, currently, we are not even offering keyboard replacement services on these devices because a very, very large number of the keyboards that we've received are completely defective and don't even work right out of the box. So when we buy these keyboards, we've tried purchasing them from several different vendors at the time of filming this video, which may be resolved by the time you view it. We've tried purchasing these keyboards from several different vendors. We'll purchase 10 or 20 from a bunch of different vendors, and over half of the keyboards in the box, right out of the box when we plug them in, won't even work. Just rows of keys won't even work. So there is some serious issue going on here. And what bothers me is that so many people are blaming the user rather than blaming the company. When the company releases something that doesn't work properly, and when they release something that they don't support, when that product is a premium product, what I would suggest is that you hold them accountable. When you give them $2,400 of your money, when you could have given $1,400 to another company and gotten something with the same specs, what I argue you should do is hold that company accountable. Do not accept $500 to replace your keyboard to 14 months after you bought it as an answer just because you didn't spend an additional $300 on top of the $2,400 for Apple Care. I don't think that that's fair, nor do I think that that is a proper way to do business. When you release something and you know full well that it doesn't work, that is wrong. When you sell something after you've received many, many complaints that there's a design issue and you pretend that there's nothing wrong, that that's wrong. If you're aggravated at the fact that you've been told it's going to be $475 or more to fix this problem, only 14 months after you spend $1,200 to $2,400 in a premium machine, you're not alone, nor do I think you're really wrong. Yes, you didn't buy the extended warranty, fine. But when you spend $2,400 on a machine that has very similar, if not identical, specifications to something that costs $1,600, you would expect that that additional $800 would not result in a downgrade in design downgrade in durability, or downgrade in quality to the point where you just expect that 14 months into your purchase, it stopped working. I don't think that's what you expect when you buy Apple. Apple has always been one of those brands that prides themselves on quality. And further, yeah, other brands may not be as supportive, but at the same time, other brands also design their products in a manner where if you need to do service after the fact, they're quite easy to work on. And they're not designed with a hundred little rivets uh, with all, all the parts, you know, clobbered together in a manner where if you're going to replace your keyboard, it takes you two hours versus two minutes. 
So I think that if you spend that extra money on a product, that you should expect that you get something that at the very least is more durable than something that costs half the price. And my goal with this video is to help you realize that you're not alone. There are a lot of people that are having the same frustration that you are. There are a lot of technicians like myself that are noticing this problem creep up over and over again. And I think that if enough people hold Apple's feet to the fire, rather than act as apologists and blame each other for the fact that they didn't buy Apple Care, that if you really hold their feet to the fire, we can get them to come up with an extended warranty replacement program for these keyboards because they're clearly a design flaw and there's something wrong with them. This is not supposed to happen, nor does this happen to many other laptops. And if you're going to produce a laptop where this does happen to, do not add insult to injury by making the keyboard replacement process take 45 minutes to two hours by riveting your keyboard into the machine. That's a dick move. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something and I wish you the best of luck with getting a replacement keyboard for a more fair and equitable price. Thank you for viewing and uh, that's it for today.